colleagues were able to join. Uh, welcome all colleagues, uh, especially those uh, who are joining from far, uh, Dr. Mantaga, uh, and um, I think I saw Dr. Mstate, I'm sure I'm right. Yeah. And then of course, Pulawa uh, is on far, we are all here. So today we've got a special presentation uh, by Prof. Mujanja and Tim. Uh, Prof. Mujanja is a, is a guru in uh, issues to do with maternal mortality and morbidity and uh, has done lots of work uh, in that area and has been grooming many people in the area as well. So we are pleased uh, to have him and Tim uh, presenting uh, on the classification of maternal death. Uh, Prof. Mujanja, uh, please over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Good evening, everyone. I hope the presentation is on your on your screens now, is it? Yes, we can see it. You just need to put on slide view. Okay. Today, we're going to discuss the classification of maternal deaths under ICD, which is the International Classification of Diseases. The new classification was created in 2012, or between 2011 and 2012, under ICD 10. It used to be called ICD 10 MM for maternal mortality, but it is now known simply as ICD MM. And what it does is that it uh, formalizes the classifications for maternal deaths, which used to be very haphazard, and it allows data to be collected using the codes, which we are going to describe at the end. So the presenters today are Dr. Rupizai Makoni, who is going to start off with a presentation for 25 minutes. This presentation we are, was developed by Dr. Jenny Creswell, whose name is on the screen. Uh, Jenny Creswell is, um, works in WHO Geneva in the Department of Sexual and Reproductive Health and Research. And she is helping us with the reanalysis of the 2000 to 2000, 2007 to 8 maternal deaths, which a PhD candidate called Ruben Sarandega is pursuing. So over to you, Dr. Rubizai Makoni. She you will have 25 minutes, followed by 15 minutes for Dr. Chikutiro. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, good evening to all of you. Um, it seems I like doing first. Today is the first 6 p.m. meeting. I also did the first Zoom, so first follow me. Um, so we're going to be discussing the ICDMM, which Prof has already alluded to is what we're going to be using to classify or to code maternal mortalities. ICD is an international classification of disease. And this one is going to be focusing on maternal mortality. Um, I know most of us have adapted to the use of ICD um, coding, which is happening in terms of uh, the medical aids now want an ICD code form, a diagnosis that we put on the um, medical aid claim forms. So this is also happening within the maternal mortality um, zone. And the World Health Organization came up with an application. It's an online application that can be used um, by anyone who's able to get um, internet access to try and assess or to code for the causes of maternal mortality. Um, as alluded to, currently we're using the ICD-10 version, but work is being done to shift to the ICD-11, which will be implemented from January 22, 2022 onwards. But at the moment, we're using the um, ICD-10. So on um, maternal death, as we all know, is the death of a woman whilst she's pregnant um, or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and the site of the pregnancy from any cause that can be related to or aggravated by the pregnancy it's man or its management, but not from the accidental or incidental causes. Most of us already know this definition, we've applied it, but quite a number of times, there are times that we've alluded to women dying of pregnancy-related causes and we've alluded to them as maternal deaths when they are not actually the correct definition of maternal death. So this just helps us to streamline and focus on 
the maternal deaths themselves. We also have ma late maternal deaths. These are deaths that are occurring um, to a woman who's been pregnant or, or who's terminated a pregnancy, either from the direct or indirect causes, and it has occurred at least four, more than 42 days after the pregnancy, but within a year of the termination. So most of the things that we consider, we consider the maternal deaths, which are within 42, but you can also get um, late maternal deaths. And these are also important because they are affected by the direct and indirect causes and pregnancy exacerbates this. So we need to have an appreciation of what they are, how they are affecting our women and what can be done to try and reduce the deaths that are associated with late maternal deaths. So, um, as we all know, maternal deaths can either be direct or indirect. The direct um, obstetric deaths, these are the ones that okay as a result of an obstetric complication of the pregnancy. So this can okay either in the pregnancy itself, during labor, or in the postpartum period. And this can be as a result from the interventions that we have instituted. They can also okay as a result of omissions where you missed something, you failed to institute a particular management or incorrect treatment where someone has given the wrong medication or the wrong dose. And um, this can also okay from a chain of events resulting from any of the above. So you may have a complication, a certain complication that occurs. At the same time, the intervention is not accurate um, or it's late. Um, there's an omission that occurs in what's supposed to be instituted and you end up giving um, incorrect treatment. So it can be a chain of events that okay, or it might just be one thing that occurs and leads to a maternal death. So those are the direct obstetric deaths. The indirect deaths, these are the ones that result from a previously existing condition or a condition that can okay during the pregnancy itself, but... Um, it is not due to a direct obstetric cause. This may also be aggravated by the physical, physiological effects that occur in pregnancy. Um, the changes that are normal to pregnancy may exacerbate certain conditions, and this will lead to a maternal death as a result of an indirect obstetric cause. Next slide. So, <clears throat> There are some deaths. Okay, I think there's a slide that was skipped there. All right. So there are some deaths that can occur um, during pregnancy, childbirth, and pu puperium, um, also known as pregnancy related deaths. So these pregnancy related deaths. Um, are all the deaths of a woman during or within 42 days of pregnancy, regardless of the cause. If we remember, our definition excludes coincidental and accidental causes, but pregnancy-related deaths will include um, these because it doesn't look at the cause of the death, but um, it, it generally looks at, did a woman die? Was she pregnant or had she just delivered? So it includes um, maternal deaths, but it's actually broader than the maternal deaths themselves. It is based purely on the timing of death in relation to pregnancy. So we're saying this woman is pregnant or this woman was pregnant, um, but delivered within 42 days. It, it's an analogous concept to neonatal mortality or infant mortality, where we're saying neonatal mortality is the death of any baby um, who, who is within the neonatal period. So it's about the duration itself, not per se the cause. So how do all these um, concepts fit together? So we have the maternal death that we said and the other deaths and the combination of all will form the pregnancy related deaths. So the maternal deaths can either be direct, maternal deaths, these are um, things such as uh, abortions, 
molar pregnancies, they are part of the abortive outcomes, ectopic pregnancy are part of abortive outcomes, can be as a result of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, um, obstetric hemorrhage, which we all know is a major cause of mortality in our environment, pregnancy-related um, infection against sepsis is a big, major concern, um, maybe as a result of other obstetric complications, we'll discuss this a little later, or um, unanticipated um, complications. The indirect maternal deaths, these are complications that have nothing to do with the obstetrics. They are the non-obstetric complications, things like cardiac disease, thyroid disease, um, HIV, TB, meningitis, all other medical conditions that a patient can have outside of um, pregnancy issues. We also have a category which is the unknown or undetermined. It is actually possible for you not to come up to a conclusion as to what killed a patient. This can occur um, in our environment, particularly if someone did not seek medical care, they fell ill, they died, and on further inquiry of, from the relatives, you can actually not determine what could have caused the death of that woman. You can't tie all the things together and come up with a, with a diagnosis. They just know someone was pregnant and she died. So we have that category for the unknown and undetermined. And then outside the maternal deaths, but pregnancy related with your coincidental causes, these will include homicides, road traffic accidents, poisoning, and things like that. So um, the ICDMM groups the deaths um, into groups which make it easier for you to, to, to sort out or try to appreciate which code you could start looking for. So you have to initially identify that this patient who died which group would I classify their cause of death? So there are a total of nine groups that ICDMM has come up with. And then from those groups, they then the subclassifications or the subcoding that comes from it. So groups and little pregnancies um, with abortive outcomes, they include ectopic pregnancies, they include um, miscarriages and all complications associated with um, miscarriages. This can be from the hemorrhage, from the sepsis, they all are classified under um, uh, spontaneous abortion. We may also have the induced abortions where someone is terminated, whether legal or illegal. And then there's a failed attempted abortion. So this all is classified under uh, pregnancies with abortive outcomes. Group two would uh, be the hypertensive disorders and pregnancy childhood and epithelium. So they include gestational hypertension, um, eclampsia, HELP syndrome. So it, in, in the group itself, the codes will then be trying to determine was this just simple preeclampsia? Was, was the HELP syndrome? Did the patient have eclampsia? And at what stage did they have the eclampsia? Was it um, in, an, in the antenatal period? Was it during labor? Was it in the postpartum period? So they have various cause, coding for the different um, conditions within the subclassification or within the group of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Obstetric hemorrhage will then talk of um, both antipartum hemorrhage and postpartum hemorrhage. Um, so for your antipartum, we're talking of placenta previa, placenta abruption, or any other causes of intrapartum hemorrhage which would include uh, uterine rupture. Then in the postpartum hemorrhage, it then further classifies, was it a primary or secondary? Was it due to atony or other factors? So it's all classified under obstetric hemorrhage. Then we've got the pregnancy-related um, infections. These are mostly to do with peripheral sepsis, chorionitis, um, infections of the breasts, which are associated with uh, child early childbirth, uh, women who develop uh, um, breast abscess and then they become septic, they die. They are classified under pregnancy-related um, infection. Group five would then include other obstetric complications. So this is a patient who's got um, an obstetric condition, 
that has led to the death, which is not otherwise um, specified in the abortive outcomes, hypertensive, obstetric hemorrhage, and pregnancy-related infections. So this will include things like um, hyperemesis gravidarum, amniotic fluid embolism, deep vein thrombosis, um, pulmonary embolism, they all fall under other obstetric um, complications. Group six would include the unanticipated complications of management. So mostly it, uh, it discusses complications of anesthesia during pregnancy, delivery in the puperium, high spinal complications, complications to the GA, a woman who dies from anesthetic complications. Ideally, this group is also supposed to include medical complications complications from the medical management that has been instituted. But um, on further analysis, you actually find that if a woman complicates as a result of medical management of a condition, the cause of death is then alluded to the condition. For example, let's say someone had, uh, had malaria and they were given quinine and uh, the quinine was given, say, as a direct IV dose instead of um, in, in, in dextrose and then the arrhythmias, they die. So they're classified as a death because of malaria, because if they did not have the malaria, they may not have had the, um, the treatment they had. So in this unanticipated complications of management, they are mostly to do with the anesthetic complications rather than the medical um, complications. Group seven would have the non-obstetric complications. Um, these are women who've got chronic hypertension, they die. Um, other infectious diseases, TB, pneumonia, meningitis, HIV, cardiac disease, all other conditions that can occur in a woman who's pregnant but are not because of the pregnancy itself. So these um, are the non obstetric complications. I've already alluded to the unknown and determined where you really can't figure out why the woman died. Um, there's no clear history. There's no... Um, medical notes to look into, there's nothing for you to determine what could have caused that maternal death, but you know that a pregnant woman has died. Then group nine would include the coincidental causes. Um, these ones are straightforward. Anything else outside what we've discussed, the road traffic accidents, homicide, poisoning, um, those would be coincidental and not as a result of uh, pregnancy and are not exacerbated by pregnancy. Although you'd find in the homicides, particularly the intimate partner violence, that group is a bit difficult to really say this is definitely coincidental because some of the um, intimate partner violence that can okay is as a result of the pregnancy itself. A woman gets pregnant, the partner becomes violent because the woman has gotten pregnant, but they're still classified under the coincidental causes. Okay, next. Right, so these groups, to make life easy, they have been classified in such a way that you can actually just look at the group and know that this is a direct obstetric death or it's an indirect or it's not a maternal death. So group one through to six, those are the direct maternal deaths, your abortive outcomes, hypertensive disease, obstetric hemorrhage, inf pregnancy related infections, um, other obstetric complications and unanticipated complications of management, those are direct obstetric deaths. The non-obstetric complications become your indirect obstetric deaths. And then um, the undetermined can't be classified into either because we don't know the cause. And the coincidental, because of the definition of a maternal death, they are not a maternal death, they're just a pregnancy-related death. Okay? So, um, if we remember when we fill in the BD 12s, there's a category or there's a place that determines what was the disease or condition leading to the death, the antecedent causes or other, and other significant causes. So um, ICD 10 mm has made it in such a way that you can easily fill in these blocks and try to move from condition from from the um, underlying condition to what the contributory conditions and actually come up with a cause of death. So um, the underlying cause of death is usually defined as the disease or the condition that initiated the morbid chain of events leading to the deaths. Um, and the contributory condition may have contributed to or pr 
predisposed an individual to death, but is not the condition um, that initiated the chain of events leading to the death. So, um, for example, here we, we've tried to be given an example where someone had uterine atony and they postpartum hemorrhage and they died. So the disease or the condition leading to the, directly to the deaths was the hypovolemic shock. This is what led them to die. Um, this shock then is due to or as a consequence of the postpartum hemorrhage. And the postpartum hemorrhage is as a consequence of the uterine atony, which is then classified, which is then the um, the cause of death is 072.1. So you'd find that the, the coding actually, when you get to postpartum hemorrhage, it then looks at what was the cause of the postpartum hemorrhage for you to actually get a code. Then there's the part two, which says what are the other significant conditions contributing to the death, but not related to the disease or condition causing it. So for example, a woman who has got anemia, this is pre-existing before you get the uterine atony. So when they are, they are anemic, it predisposes them. Um, it contributes to the death. It makes the PPH worse. It makes the body not be able to compensate for the deficit in the fluid volume that has been there because they are already starting in, in a negative position. So it has contributed to the death, but it's not directly um, causing that death. So there's also the lowest part who says this woman was pregnant at time of death, not pregnant at time of death, um, but within 42 days or pregnant within the past year. This helps to determine uh, whether it was a maternal death or a pregnancy related death. So um, in the analysis um, of the underlying cause of death, you need to appreciate that, that the death should have only one underlying cause of death, but it may have multiple contributory causes or conditions. So there's only one thing that then makes the woman die. But for that one thing to be there, it may be because of multiple things. Um, so in some settings, the underlying cause may only be identified at the group level. In others, it may be identified at the category or subcategory level. So it's easier for you to then go to the, to the lowest level um, of classification and get see if you can actually get a specific code. But you start with the major group, which is, for example, the case that we're dealing with is uh, postpartum hemorrhage. This falls under obstetric hemorrhage, the woman hemorrhage. So in the obstetric hemorrhage, you then look for the code for the postpartum hemorrhage, which is 072. When you get to the sub um, category level, you're then saying this postpartum hemorrhage, was this a third stage hemorrhage or was it other immediate postpartum hemorrhage, which occurred after the third stage, uh, but within the first 24 hours, or was it a delayed and secondary postpartum hemorrhage was it a postpartum um, hemorrhage due to coagulation defects? So with the case that we had that we're talking about, the patient had uterine atony. So it will be a third stage hemorrhage. So the um, coding for that particular patient will be all 72.0, which is a third stage um, hemorrhage. So for the indirect maternal deaths, you actually need um, clear information as to whether this condition could be aggravated by the pregnancy, um, whether there was a relationship between the disease itself and the pregnancy uh, for you to determine that this was an indirect um, maternal death. So it is the interaction between the death or the condition that the patient had and the pregnancy that is the underlying cause of death. So only the certifying physician can assess the mutual aggravation and only proper reporting of the part one where the saying um, the underlying cause of death. This one has to be filled in preferably by the person who was actually seeing the patient because they're the only one who was able to actually um, assess the mutual aggravation that was there. 
So this needs to be assessed carefully before you can actually contribute, conclude that this was because of hypovolemic shock. If you don't have the clinical evidence to say this was hypovolemic shock, then it's difficult to, to, to actually put it as the underlying condition. So um, this, for example, where I'm saying they have to be an aggravating, uh, con an aggravating association, we'll take, for example, a woman who's HIV positive. They may be HIV positive, but they die from a direct maternal death, which is not the HIV. So this is a woman who's HIV positive, then has a spontaneous uh, miscarriage, and they become infected, they become septic, they have septic shock, and end up having renal failure. So in this particular issue, the underlying cause is your septic miscarriage. But HIV becomes a contributory factor. So this is a direct maternal death, although the woman had contributory factor of HIV. Different from a woman who dies um, who is HIV positive and dies because of the aggravation of the HIV and its effect of and the effect of pregnancy on HIV. So for example, um, a woman is HIV positive, they, they are pregnant, they become very unwell, they get uh, pulmonary TB or they get pneumonia and they die. So this becomes the underlying cause of death because it's the HIV that has complicated the pregnancy and led to the death. So it becomes an underlying cause of death and it becomes an indirect maternal death. Then it may also be coincidental where it's not a maternal death. Um, for example, in a woman who is HIV positive, who dies early in the first trimester from an HIV Western syndrome. So this patient was already unwell. They were already um, on the brink of dying. They just so happened to get pregnant in that time. So they died from the HIV in the early onset of pregnancy. So pregnancy had not yet had effects to aggravate whatever was happening. So HIV becomes a coincidental um, issue. The, the death becomes a coincidental death um, because this had not given HIV time for it to be underlying or to aggravate. The pregnancy had not given uh, time to aggravate the HIV. So it's a coincidental uh, death and it's not a maternal death in this instance. Um, we are in the era of COVID-19 and in COVID-19, multiple things can happen. Uh, it also has the issue of being uh, mutually aggressive um, between the COVID-19 and the pregnancy. So this becomes an indirect maternal death. This is what you're most likely to, to find out. Um, so because COVID-19 is a respiratory infection, it's a viral infection, it becomes a pregnancy complicated by COVID-19. It falls under the category of O98.5, which are the other viral diseases complicating pregnancy, childbirth, and the preparium. So you then can further classify it into a O98.5 U07.1, which means you actually did a uh, COVID test, which was positive, or when there was no COVID test done, it becomes an or 98.5 U07.2, which is a probable or suspected COVID-19 case, be depending on the case, def if the patient met the case definition for a probable or suspected COVID-19 case. However, a woman may also die from a direct obstetric cause, yet they have um, COVID-19. So this um, will become an, an, a, a, a condition that um, is coincidental, but is not the cause of death. So they die from a direct obstetric cause with a coincidental COVID-19 infection. So in this particular case, if a woman um, died from COVID-19, the disease or condition leading directly to death is the respiratory failure. The antecedent uh, cause, which is um, the respiratory failure was due to a pneumonia. The pneumonia was due to pregnancy complicated by COVID-19. So therefore, uh, the code for this one will be O98.5. Next slide. 
So just as a technical note, uh, particularly with COVID-19, you would find that um, a death due to COVID-19 is a death resulting from a clinically compatible illness in a probable or confirmed COVID-19 case unless there is a clear alternative cause of death that cannot be related to the COVID-19 disease. So this is important when you're defining a death due to COVID-19. It's also important to note that for you to confirm, for you to classify it as a COVID-19 death, there should have been no recovery period between the illness from the COVID-19 and the death. So from the time you make the diagnosis, the patient has to remain unwell until they die from the COVID-19. If they have COVID-19, they have an illness, then they get well. It then ceases to become a COVID-19 uh, illness and death. So you would find in this period that we've um, been living where there is maternal mortality due to COVID-19, we also get women who have died because of uh, service disruptions or quarantine restrictions. Remember, in the first 21 days, people could not even move around. It was difficult for a person to move from their house to the hospital. The hospital was not functioning well. Um, staff was unsure whether they were safe to manage patients or not. So there probably a number of women who died as a result of these disruptions and restrictions. So technically, these are not COVID-19 deaths, but they are COVID-19 related. So they are not due to the COVID-19, but they appeared because of the COVID-19. So they become COVID-19 related deaths. And ideally, we need to monitor whether there was an excess in our maternal mortality during this pandemic. And this will be able to capture the impact of uh, service disruption. I think this is something that we need to assess in our environment, whether there was um, an increase in the deaths that we experienced during the intense phase of the lockdown is opposed to all other periods that um, we have been having. So these are the resources that um, are useful for you to understand COVID-19, COVID, um, the ICD MM. So we've got the ICD-10, ICD-10 MM, the ICD-10 training, the WU technical not on ICD coding associated with COVID-19 and the Wood Department of Sexual and Reproductive Health and Research. You can get more information from this. It makes um, it a whole lot more clearer and it makes it easier for you to understand. You can also follow those um, on Twitter or visit the website to get more information on the ICD-10 coding. So from now, I'm heading over to Dr. Chikutiro, who will present the cases. We'll have questions right at the end after um, all the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Rumbi. So my task is to present um, on a few examples of uh, maternal death case summaries, which um, we managed to have an opportunity to review from the 2008 and two, 2018 Zimbabwe maternal and perinatal mortality study. So as you are aware, this uh, study is done every, every 10 years. So the next study will will be done uh, in, 20, in, in 2028. So the first case I'm going to present is a case of uh, Mrs. BM, 29-year-old para 2 gravida uh, 3. Um, so we are not going to identify the institutions uh, in line with the guidelines from the Minister of Health, uh, maternal and um, um, perinatal death um, uh, surveillance guidelines, which were released. So she was para 2 gravida 3, and the last normal menstrual period was on the 23rd of June, 2018, which made the estimated date of delivery using a uh, last normal menstrual period, uh, 30 March, 2019. She was HIV negative and this uh, pregnancy was planned and booked at 24 weeks gestational age. She booked at a local clinic and um, she had uh, one uh, obstetric ultrasound scan 
which was done at 37 weeks, which was essentially normal. There were no other antenatal um, complications reported during the five antenatal clinic visits. However, of note is that uh, on the five visits, there were no some with erratic blood pressure readings because of absence of a, a blood pressure cuff. So on the 11th of April, 2019, she presented at 41 weeks, five days at the same local clinic where she booked with a diagnosis of post death. Examination uh, by the midwife was in, uh, consistent uh, with the gestational age and the height of funders was said to be term. She was immediately referred to the district hospital. However, unfortunately, she was lost to follow up. She then presented at the district hospital four weeks later under unclear circumstances. So it was not clear in the notes um, where she had been taken uh, to deliver uh, by, by the relatives. However, we could speculate that she was being attended by traditional midwives um, uh, or, you know, this practice of um, taking these women at, at church shrines to attempt to deliver. So she was laboring for the past two days and on the presentation at the district hospital, um, intrauterine fetal demise uh, was, uh, was confirmed. And the synthesis of height was noted to be large for death. So she was immediately, um, and at, uh, the GMOs at the district hospitals intended to take care for an emergency cesarean section. But because of a, a condition with a diagnosis of obstructed labor, um, the nurse anesthetists were not comfortable to take care to, to theater. So she was immediately transferred to the provincial hospital on the 7th of May, 2019, and advanced labor. She was fully dilated, um, um, and there were, the fetal uh, demise was, was, was confirmed. She was also in shock at presentation to the provincial hospital with severe pallor and unrecordable blood pressures. So an impression of uh, hypovolemic shock secondary to ruptured uterus uh, was made. Um, an attempt to, to do an, a vacuum delivery was, uh, was done, but it, it failed. And again, um, a common problem in our scenario where we have institutions, but sometimes comprehensive of that care is not possible due to other reasons like anesthetic um, uh, capability of the absence of an anesthetist at the provincial hospitals and other issues like intensive care unit. So they could not operate, the provincial obstetrician could not operate the patients and uh, they wanted to refer the patient um, for med further management at a tertiary institution. Unfortunately, she deteriorated and died three hours before any emergency cesarean delivery could be done. Postmortem post uh, confirmed a uh, hemoporitoneum with the ruptured uterus with, the, with a baby who was thought to be a, a macrosomic. Um, floating in the abdomen. Next slide, please. Okay, so for this uh, death, um, coding, it's um, for a death which occurred due to rupture of uterus during the pregnancy. As um, Dr. McCon has alluded to earlier on, we then need to go to our online application. So, it's easy to type in the cause of death as a rupture of uterus during labor. And then you are directed to the page uh, where there is the ICD-10 mm coding. So as you can see, there's a, a picture of an extract of the page to code this. So it's classified under group three 
of obs, um, obstetric hemorrhage. And um, the subgroup is all 71, the major subgroup, which is obstetric, um, obstetric trauma. So then you go to the uh, subgroup, you find that the ICD-10 mm coding will be all 71.1, which is rupture of uterus uh, during labor. So the coding, the subgroup will then classify whether this rupture occurred before a woman was in labor, um, situations where we have got these women with spontaneous rupture of the uterus, or even patients who had previous cesarean sections who rupture before they are in, in active labor. Next slide. So for this case, um, our cause of death is classified broadly in group three of static hemorrhage and um, using the same um, coding system, which has been alluded to earlier on, we have to identify the disease or condition directly causing death, which was hypovolemic shock. The antecedent causes were due to a consequence of a ruptured uterus. And the ruptured uterus was as a consequence of obstructed labor. So what was the contributory factor or other underlying condition? So it was a post-term pregnancy and the type of maternal death is direct. So the ICD-10 mm code becomes 071.1. Next slide, please. So case two is case of Mrs. Uh, SM. So this case was extracted from the 2007 to 2008 um, period. Um, so she was 19 years old, HIV positive, who, are, who was not yet on treatment. So she presented at the provincial hospital at an estimated gestational age of 16 weeks by clinical examination, but a, a pregnancy positive a, a test had been done to confirm the pregnancy. So she was unbooked. She presented with productive cough for more than a month, chest pains and other constitutional symptoms. And on assessment by the, by the doctor at the provincial hospital, she was noted to be critically ill and the, a, a diagnosis of severe pneumonia, a uh, rule out pulmonary tuberculosis was met. So on the 18th of February, 2008, she was admitted in the hospital, comments on IV antibiotics, invest, investigations were done. However, she did, not, um, she did not improve on IV antibiotics. Chest X-ray, sputum for FBs were taken. Sputum for FBs, however, were negative for FBs. And the chest X-ray revealed a right-sided pleural effusion. She was then commenced on the, the intensive phase of uh, anti-TBs. Uh, anti however, more than a month in the hospital, she, her condition continued to deteriorate and the patient is demised um, undelivered at the gestational age of 22 weeks. So again, we go to our ICD-10 MM coding system, which the, the, the broad um, group will be infections unrelated to pregnancy. And in this case, this is an age defining uh, condition complicating pregnancy. So you can note that there's a list of uh, infections, viral infections, which can uh, occur in pregnancy, but are not related to the pregnancy. And the broad group is uh, O98. So under O98, if you go down to human immunodeficiency um, virus, disease complicating pregnancy, childbirth and, and the puparium, you notice that uh, we, we assigned a, a code of 098.7. So 
So analyzing this case, the cause of death will fall into group seven, which are non-obstetric complications. So the disease or condition directly causing the death can be attributable to respiratory failure and also as a, as a result of the pulmonary uh, tuberculosis. And certain causes due to a consequence of an AIDS-defining condition, which was there in, on the patient um, who was pregnant. So what was the underlying uh, problem? This was HIV, in, HIV infection, which has been confirmed in this case. So type of maternal death becomes an indirect maternal death and the ICD 10 mm code becomes 098.7. Of note is that for pulmonary tuberculosis, we then have to search the codes for pulmonary tuberculosis, uh, the normal code in the ICD 10 classification of deaths, um, irrespective of where, whether someone was pregnant or not. So we'll then assign a subgroup of B20, B20. Point zero. Okay, so that's the last slide I have on the two cases. Thank you, Dr. Chikutiro. Uh, I only have two slides and it's to do with training. So as we explained earlier, we are doing a review of the maternal deaths of 2007 to eight and recording them according to ICD-MM. And during this process, I received the assistance of some younger colleagues who in the course of analyzing the deaths undertook the training in ICD-10-MM. So if these uh, young doctors belong to a firm, uh, in that firm, it means that they can actually start right away and start coding the deaths during meetings, during um, audit meetings, um, finding the group and assigning the MM code. So these are the people who undertook the training recently. But we are expanding the training because this was, this, these people were only from Harare due to financial constraints but we want to spread the training outside Harare. And so on this slide is a list of people who are coming for training between the 27th and the, between the 23rd and the 27th of November. Next year, funds per meeting, we will go to the other provinces. So your turn will come um, when the ministry versus the funds for expanded training. Eventually, all obstetricians, all midwives, all pediatricians must know how to perform ICD-10, ICD-MM coding, and ICD-PM. So uh, next year, we're going to present ICD-PM, which is ICD perinatal mortality. So there's a similar concept which is applied when we have had a perinatal death, either stillbirth or an early neonatal death. So the training for that will be coming. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Mazire and colleagues for coming. And I'd like to thank those who assisted the ZMPMS with the coding of, for the research. And I would like to welcome these people on this list to the training at the end of November. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Mjanja and team for an exciting presentation. I, I had to jump uh, on the moving train because uh, uh, Dr. Mazire uh, had some uh, a little emergency. And I uh, would like to thank you guys for organizing this. I think it's, um, it's a, good, a very good eye-opener for ICT-10 in general, because uh, as an association, we had also been trying very much to see if we can uh, get someone to talk about ICD-10 because uh, uh, it's something that's uh, real and it's something that is uh, being implemented by most medical aids. And uh, to actually 
give us a snippet in the form of a focus presentation on maternal mortality reporting for ICD-10 has been a great eye opener. And uh, I'm very happy that you are expanding the training to cover the whole of um, the whole of Zimbabwe. I will uh, probably just um, give the floor to you can show by raising your hands to anyone who has got uh, a question or anything they need clarification uh, with regards to the presentations uh, given today. Uh, Dr. Mate, as we are waiting for questions, I think Dr. Matsire had posted a question on the chat group. Okay. Um, where, had, where would you put suicide due to purple de depression? So yeah. there is um, a category under um, other obstetric causes in your group five. There's a category where you include um, deaths, direct deaths, um, without any obstetric code. So there's no obstetric code for it, but they're classified in the group five um, where a woman then has intentional self-harm is a result of uh, peripheral psychosis. It falls under group five, which is a direct maternal death. Okay, thank you uh, very much for attending that question, Dr. Makoni. Um, uh, I'm not seeing any any raised uh, hands. Uh, Veronica, do you see any? But there are no hands raised from my end. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, Dr. Mseta's hand is up. Okay, uh, Dr. Mseta, you can go ahead. Dr. Mseta, you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead with your question. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you from, from, from very far, Dr. Mseta. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, nice presentation. Actually, in Botswana here, the ICD-10 codes are now required by medical aid societies when you submit <clears throat> A claim. So I think what what is happening now the world over is that the ICD-10 codes will, will play more and more important role. So what I was kind of asking is, uh, Dr. Professor Mujanja was speaking about training. Is it possible to organize online training for those who are far away who can come to Harare? Yes, uh, there is online training from the World Health Organization. Oh, I see. So both from Geneva, uh, but also from the Afro region based in Brazzaville. Um, we, in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynae in Harare, at the UZ, we are organizing training for local Zimbabweans. Uh, at institutions in Zimbabwe. We don't have the resources to come to Botswana to train uh, people in, in outside the country. So we are limited in what we can do, but if you go to one of those um, sites, which uh, Rupi Dema going to show at the end of the presentation, you will be led to a site where you can be trained in your, in your own leisure. Okay. And, uh, there are also dummy cases, cases which have been which have been prepared specifically for this type of activity, which you can access on that side. Okay, thank you. It's good ah, to see you. Thank you, you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof, for the response. And uh, uh, Dr. Mseta, you, you being a member of ZSOG, uh, this is not going to be the first and last presentation on ICT-10 uh, for maternal mortality or any other. Uh, condition because we are organizing uh, more talks on ICT-10. So definitely uh, you will be benefiting from the presentations. Okay, thank you. Uh, any, other, any other questions uh, from, from, from members? So thank you so very much to the team for an interesting, very interesting presentation. Um, just a few reminders and housekeeping issues. Uh, our annual general meeting or annual scientific meetings 
uh, on on the 14th of uh, November, which is going to be next week, Saturday is going to be a full day jam-packed meeting. The scientific committee is working behind the scenes. Uh, and I'm sure I will be sharing a pre preliminary flyer by tomorrow and then uh, a full flyer uh, with bio sketches of all the pre presentations and presenters is going to be shared sometime next week because one of our sponsors uh, from outside the country is actually working on it and it's going to take a couple of days, but we'll be sharing a flyer. So uh, we are really hoping that uh, we will be a part of the excitement uh, on the 14th of um, of November, and uh, I think uh, with that, uh, I should say something. Uh, so yes, you can say something. Uh, at the beginning of the of um, the presentation, we showed um, a PDF document, which we've already given to Veronica to to send to society members. This presentation is also being given already to Veronica. So any anybody wishing to look at it again. And just contact with the ZOCG secretary. No, that's 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 very true. Uh, the presentations were being uh, streamlined uh, on YouTube, and we always record them. And um, so are uh, any other presentations that have been done before. So for those who want to go back and look at these presentations, uh, you are free to to actually do so. If you don't know how, please just uh, get in touch with uh, our vibrant chief operations officer. That's what we call her now, uh, uh, Miss Veronica. So you'll be able to assist you in any way possible. So I, I think with these parting words, I'll say thank you to everyone and uh, we'll see you uh, 